Three, two, one. We are live. This is Two O F Entertainment. Lots of talking and banter. Who's the rocket scientist that wrote that? I get to buckle up and enjoy the ride. Really? Lots of talking and banter? Oh, David left. He's insulted. So we wrote it. He wrote that. And now look what you've done. I know. So we have never seen again. I will, and that's what happens. And actually, what happens is David's been having a bandwidth problem um in uh wherever he is amsterdam norway whatever the friggin' country is where they use like hamsters to get the internet so david has a problem that can't go fast enough. It, it, seriously that's what ends up happening so we had a show the other day and this is he would come in and out like this so you, you know like exactly. it's like the auntie well, we just said nice things is, about it, you well he says it says he's just dodging bullets so maybe somebody was firing at you was that was that yeah, yeah. there you go no well what it is is for some strange reason uh, uh stream yard cuts my audio off so i right. can't hear anything so i have to go out that's of the studio, that's me actually knock knock on the door <laughs> and come back in again but oh um, uh, yeah we keep we, we keep kicking you out apparently you keep figuring it out how to get back in so well, uh, well, 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 what we do know it's gonna get it's gonna wait, get wait. And, there he is. And, now he's back okay and so what we know about <laughs> i'm getting now, the flash the, the one thing that we know now about this situation is that we don't know about this situation, and therefore, it's the unexplained. Ooh, and that's what we're going to talk about today, the unexplained. Yeah. And Vicky's with us from Vicky IRL, which we were called, we, our show originally started as Vicky Needs a Friend, but now we call it in Vicky in Real Life. So if you've not seen it I every Sunday... and. She, you, I, but we don't count the dollars that you brought to Korea with you. Um, Vicky has Vicky has a, 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 a podcast with us on Vicky in Real Life. It, she airs a new thing every Sunday, but she has shorts throughout the week of her adventure in Korea. I mean, it's North Korea, but still Korea. Um, so she's having a good time. Super it was cheaper. <laughs> and she sent us a supercar. What, what was yes. the supercar? Lam That's a Lamborghini. Uh, Huracan. Huracan. Yes, a, a Lamborghini. Yeah. 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 It's very confusing because you go Vicky, oh, Vicky. Okay. IRL in real yeah. life, and for some reason I thought it was Ireland, so it's not Ireland clearly. No, it's Vicky in real life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so that's why we made sure. It's in Korea. So where, so where are you in Korea now? Seoul. I'm in Seoul. Right. Vicky's Can you see Seoul. it? Kind of. Yeah. She's got lots of Seoul. Seoul. Vicky's got Seoul. Oh or, my God. To be strictly yeah. true, Seoul's got Vicky. Uh huh. Yeah. There and she's go. and she's right around the corner from that's the thirtieth parallel. For all the so world what's your favorite events? thing about Seoul uh, so far? Yeah. What's your favorite thing about Seoul so the far? The view, looking out of her window. <laughs> <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, hey, that's a good question. I, I People always say the food, but it wouldn't be the food for me. I just love mm, the vibe of the place. Like, I love just walking around the streets. Like this afternoon, I just picked a neighborhood and I just started walking around and it's just so different and it's just, everything is new. And every time I look at something, I'm trying to figure out what that is or what that that store is or what that cafe or smell or sound or, you know, all that stuff. It's, that's that's what I love about it so far. That's great. My third time here, well. so I'm getting, I'm getting better at it. Hmm? Are there a lot of other tourists as well this time of year or not? Not really. It's still pretty cold out, but um, the area that I'm in, I, in Hongdae or Hapjong, it's a, a university area. So there are a lot of foreigners and there's more English here and there's more. Um, I'll be over in 24 hours. You're at a university area. That means there's university school girls. I'm on a plane. Book me a flight. <laughs> Hurry up. Come on over. <laughs> there you go. I know, right? We're going to talk to you. <laughs> I know that. I need to know. I just lost the sugar baby because, you know, she had to go and now I got a, time for another one. Here we come. Going to Korea. Semester starts in a month. You're good. Yeah. There you go. Over here in time. Who needs a daddy? <laughs> so there you yeah. have it. So. We've, we've just we've just gone into a whole Opa, other Gangnam, Opa, That's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> now we'll, be, we'll wheel it back in. So. It's just, you know, sometimes I just say stuff to see who's going to blush. 
and the three of you never never felt that. I'm just enjoying myself saying I, stuff. I'm, I guess, I'm, nat I'm naturally blushed. Oh, yes, so. yes, you're naturally <laughs> blushed. Yes. Natur <laughs> I naturally can. So, yes, but to make well, you guys well, blush well, is, well, is well, what well, I did. If, if, if Shazad is naturally blushed, I'm go. naturally Church of England. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we know. <laughs> You, you do really have a vicar, sort of, uh, a vicar sort of look about you today, don't you? Thank, you that's thank true. You, you do. Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. You do. You got a vicar. Yeah, it's, uh, that makes Stephen uh, the sure Tart. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah, that's what you, you want me to be the cardinal. That's right. Okay, let's, listen, it's just like the charity. We're not, that we going, have. Down, we're not going down to the bishop. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. Right, Despite know. the bishop, that's what we talked about yesterday. And Adam on the eve. That was a whole. That was live. That was a whole nother show. Yeah, that was that was weird. But we do have a charity that we do work with uh, religious organizations. It's it a halfway does. house for girls that don't go all the way. For girls that so don't we're go very excited way. about that. So you know. It's, that's how Vicky got my name. Uh, Korea. There you go. Now, let us discuss the real talk. You, you hear that? You hear that? That's the penny yeah. dropping. Yes. I know. Mm -hmm. Penny's from heaven. Oh, uh, this is a good show. I like I this show penny, so far. I thought Penny Penny was from Watford, but there you go. All oh, right. Okay. Yes. <laughs> so penny last penny. time on the show, Vicky couldn't make it because she was in Miami being abducted by aliens. But last time, New yeah. Year's Eve in Miami. How was that? Yeah, Miami New Year's Eve. <laughs> Same got probed. Miami's always like that. You can't even yeah, tell. Like, what? <laughs> you always get probed when you go to Miami. Um, so, but there was these aliens apparently at the Bayshore Mall in Miami. That's all fake news, Stephen. Right. On. But here's the thing. 300 police cars come for five kids, supposedly. They shut down the airport. 60,000 people have no power. And they were doing yeah. the local newspapers and everybody asked for the tapes from the stores. Couldn't do it. There were some guys that got video from people's phones that showed large objects, people walking and sort of like multidimensional things, like people coming in and out of this thing that didn't exist. But where, but so, where, is, where is the footage? Of on that? YouTube, of course. No, it's it's real. I, I've oh. seen the footage, right? right. It's not, it, it, you know, there's a picture of, there's an overhead picture it's right. very famous you can google it and it shows these super huge camels in the desert right like right. somebody's drawn these massive black camels and then what you realize actually it's a line of camels walking along the desert and it's the shadow that's being cast that makes oh. them look like these super huge you know massive camels and right. going back to whatever i've been able to make out from that footage it looks right. the same it looks like there's just a shadow that's being cast that makes them look like okay. they're control, but they're not actually I but, that, but again, it's very fuzzy. Yeah, and again, they said in, yeah. in the original well, video that they found now, it's it's three police officers walking together. And right. because of that, it, they're, the three of them together make this large yeah. looking alien shape. And of course the, the but the original video, you can actually see the three officers walking together. Hmm? The 300 yeah. policemen were only there because Dunkin' Donuts were giving away free donuts. There you go. So that's why, that's but, why they're but all why down there. They hey. must have run but here's... But okay, the so guy that was so this is the thing. That's what we know. Yeah. That's what yeah. they've told us. But yeah. then the, the question still yeah. remains, as Stephen is saying, why were there 300 police officers there? Why yeah. was there a power outage? And why was the airport closed if it was just three or four teenagers running amok in the local mall? I don't understand. Right. Well, the Miami Here Police go. Department said that there were no airports closed and no power outages. All I can do is re I'm just reading what I'm just re whatever. Re Even the newspaper like Channel 10, which is like a, a television station there, said that's what happened. And the police department's going, none of this happened. There's a guy filming from his balcony that shows all of it, turns around and all of Miami is dark. And he's and Bayside Mall is in the flight path of Miami International. And he's like. Like two seconds ago, there's like planes. There's no planes, but there's now Black Hawk helicopters circling the mall. I don't care if there's three teenagers or 10 teenagers. I don't care if they have like AK 47s and they're shooting each other. You're not closing an airport. You're not, you know what I mean? So it, there's yeah, something you, going on. You're, you're certainly yeah, well, not getting the Black Hawks out. I mean, that's yeah. incredible. Right. What's and going on, what's going on, Stephen, is that you yeah. want to believe that there are aliens in Miami. 
Argentina. Oh, there are. They come from yeah, Colombia. Yeah, they come from Argentina. They come from Bolivia. They come from Cuba. There's tons of aliens in Miami. I'm just but looking I'm at the wall. I'm just looking at the wall behind you, wondering oh. why there isn't that poster that was in Fox Mulder's office. I oh, I want to believe so, because as we all know, the truth is out I'm there. part of the Illum I'm a part of the Illuminati, and I am with the lizard people. So we already know that oh, they we're oh, here. Yeah. I'm just saying. So. So you should you should be tuned in then. You should be telling us. You yeah, there's a timeline. You should be on first name basis with those giant aliens in Miami. Yeah, no, that was I am. I'm just Harry. asking why. I'm, right. I'm just saying, show the film. So you know, it's just sort of. It's, I'm just fascinated yeah, but, by. Go ahead, David. I just think you want it. You just you're just desperate to have. Uh, no, I mean, I just think there's too much out there. I mean, I don't know if you remember this about five six Miami. years ago. No, my screw Miami. Um, about five or six years ago, there was a picture that uh, an observatory filmed of the sun. And it almost looked like a, there was a big ship that was getting plasma from the sun. And they're all like, oh, no, that's a sunspot. That's this, that's that. And some guy that used to work at the Navy in aerial photography, like, tore it apart and goes, no, that's a real object. So I think there's things out there. Um, that, do I want to believe? Tabby's Tabby star. Was that the one? Could be. Star, it's a star that exhibits unusual, significant dimming patterns. And uh, people think it might be a swarm of comets, uh, interstellar dust, or an artificial mega structure built yeah. by an alien civilization. That's one of the possibilities that people yeah. think they are. On the, the, the other thing, the other thing you, you, might, you might remember, this was uh, 2017. What was it the Umamwa? This was the giant cylindrical object. Yep. I read the book. Yeah, yes. oh, you read the way you go. They yeah. it passed close by us, and they and they reckoned that the way that it was changing directions and accelerating yeah. and stuff that it wasn't a natural object, you know. Yeah, the giant, the, it's a, it's a, RV, giant RV, whatever. The professor from no, no, RV something or other is a Harvard professor. I read his book about it, and his book is like two hundred pages, but it's fascinating because he really compares a meteor and a comet to this and how their patterns are. And he said, so like, you know, one does this, one's elliptical, one's a circle, but, but, but does this. He says, this is coming along and goes, you know, we've done 50 billion miles. We're going to make a right-hand turn. And we're going to do another couple. Oh, now we're going to make a left. And he goes, now, he said, it's under intelligent, he proved in his book, if you will, that's under intelligent uh, control, which I thought was fascinating. Um, well, intelligent so, control of selling books, you mean? Is that what? Is that how he did? Well, no. I mean, even the scientists, the mainstream scientists, said that it's not acting like yeah, just, anything yeah, they've just seen. Just because before. he went to Harvard doesn't mean to say that he can't be another fruitcake. I mean, come on. <laughs> I understand uh, that, but I'm saying is real scientists, if you will, said that as well. Yeah, I don't believe it. Ricky, 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 get the popcorn, Ricky. This is going to be fun. Yeah, it's going to be good. All I have is so. my. All I have is my water. I know, right? Ah, yeah, but is oh, it water? Oh, is it, is it oh, but it's the water. Is it, is it, it looks like soju. Yeah. <laughs> so, apparently the Church of England, um, I don't want to mention any names there, Vicar, um, they don't believe in UFOs <laughs> because they have a fairy tale about a guy with a white beard sitting on a throne, and that, with a book of fables, is what they believe. So... Then some little old man clicked his fingers. Seven days later, we all magically appeared instead of like you know delving back to what really happened. So. Well, the thing is, like you know, there, there's something called uh, Marian apparitions, and okay. these apparently are supernatural appearances by the Virgin Mary. The Vatican has officially recognized that some of these apparitions, such as those in France um, and Portugal, uh, they've recognized them mm -hmm. as being real. So, um, yeah. so, like so there when, you they, go. when yeah. they weep, when, when they weep, yeah, blood. There's loads of theories about that as well. So the eyes weep or the hands weep. Mm. Mm. Well, how about the three girls in Spain that saw, if you will, the Virgin Mary or a UFO, and they gave three prophecies to them, which they were given to the Vatican, and the Pope read the first two, but he's never read the third because it's supposed to be, I guess, terrible type of thing. So it's just fascinating that things happen and people go, no, it's not true. Never happened. You know, there's a, there's a fundamental question about all of this right. stuff, whether it is the physical um, possibilities of, you know, what they call them UAPs now, which I still hate. Right. I prefer UFOs or these, or these religious occurrences or whatever. And the thing is, is like, well, 
it, you know, it, 20, 30, 40 years ago, you could tell it's all hearsay. It's all people telling you right. stuff. There's no way to prove it. But now, you know, we all walk around with these things, you know, with, yeah. with, with these incredible high resolution cameras on them. Why, why don't we have definitive proof of all of these bizarre goings on in, in the planet? Yeah. Because the Illuminati, the Illuminati <laughs> and the lizard people own all the telecom companies. Yeah. And they, as soon as, this stuff gets, as soon as this stuff gets seen, it gets wiped out on your telephone. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. There's these guys in well, suits here. that show up with a pen and then you just flash yes. and they... Yeah, and it goes. That's, it. That's the one, yeah. yeah. Look, 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 see but, the pen? Yeah. There you go. <laughs> see the pen? But here, how about, how about these, how about these yeah. two, how about these yeah. two cases? See, look, watch which the have pen, been, which, watch the which is which is stuck there, yeah, and you I love it. Yeah, there great. you go. <laughs> How about these two cases? Who's this guy? Yeah, I don't know. I've never seen him before. There you go. So there you go. There you go. He looks like a vicar. He looks like a vicar. So, um, yeah, like but how about how about in 1954? <laughs> When not only radar, but people actually saw oh, five nice discs hovering around the White House, and they actually yeah. scrambled jets jets from Andrews Air Force Base oh. to chase them yeah, and couldn't got catch them. Nothing else to do, have they? You got nothing else to do. So, but well, wait, guys. there's there's it's that weird. one. Weather balloon. Wait, wait, there's that one. No, there's that one. It would happen for three nights consecutively. It was actually reported in the New York Times, the Washington. I mean, it's it's a well known oh, case. True, the other then. case, which is fascinating to me, is in 1976 a JAL plane was tailed by a ufo that they said was, was so, like a mile in diameter um and everyone's like bs however the faa controller kept the tape when the fbi and the cia paid him a visit and said give us everything they gave him all his notes but they never asked for the actual tape there's an actual radar tape of this happening um and they drew pictures so there's real cases well, now, some of this came out in the hearings recently, didn't they? About yes. two months ago, there was the hearings. It was it right. the Senate hearings? And there was these guys that have mm. been specializing in this and were Air, ex Air Force guys and what have you. And I mean, you know, uh, to my mind, and I did watch that because I remember discussing it with you at the time. You know, we're all taking yeah. the mic about Stephen, but I'm, I'm, I'm with him actually. I'm with Stephen on this one. You know, I, I think there's, there's crazy stuff out there. <laughs> You yeah. know, and, and I remember discussing this with you at the time, and I thought that thing was going to blow up. I thought that was going to yeah. go everywhere because I even saw it over here. I thought yeah. everybody. And then it all went quiet again, you know? And this yeah. is like, what is going on here? Why aren't we talking about this stuff? I'll tell you what's this really is... interesting you say about blowing up in the UK. There, there, there is a, a huge following of UFOs in the, in the right. UK. In Europe, nobody seems to care. Yeah. yeah I mean, even, you, even, the, whole, even the whole US UFO thing, and the, you know, like yeah. the, when they had the, the big committee in the US and, it, and, and people were sort of, it was all over the place. People just said, well, that's just very American, isn't it? That's the sort of thing. That's the sort of thing that, that only happens they're, they're in America. They're too, yeah. They're too worried about striking, you know, driving their tractors down the the, the main road. Oh, yeah, yeah. Block. I was going to say the French. Oh, yeah, oh, the yeah. French are just too busy striking. Yeah, I don't they're, care. they're important they're, stuff. They're the Germans, they're important stuff. Yeah, it's on the ground stuff. They don't care about what's up here. It's all. No, this but we can't the, see it. We but, can't see it anyway because of the light, light pollution. I live in Holland. That's true. Yeah. We, we light, that's we light it. Up it's, the rest it's always. It's cloudy yeah. and stuff over there, so they maybe can't that, see yeah, maybe, what's maybe up they're on still used to the weirdness of Europe yeah. in general. You yeah. know, yeah. the huge <laughs> melting pot yeah. of different cultures and different people and everything. They're just like, well, if an alien was walking amongst them, we'd be like, oh, he's from Belgium. He likes chocolate. I don't know. It's, 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 That's right. Have some chocolate. <laughs> so, yeah. but you, touched on, you touched on a very valid point there. I mean, I've, I didn't I've touch anything. We can't see your hands, Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, but you you touch on a very valid point of things yourself because there are obviously far far more places in the u.s which are not um you know, don't have light pollution and right. you'd be very hard pressed to find it in the uk and certainly in europe as i say look at any satellite imagery of europe and and holland where i live is lit up like like a like a bonfire so yeah. anything could happen. Mm -hmm. It could be happening. Well, in North night Korea, night. <laughs> it's really dark. Yeah, <laughs> so nighttime, you should see yeah. everything up there. <laughs> That's yeah. right. Yeah. But I think to your point that you said earlier, I think you are seeing a lot of videos from the phones. Like you'll see someone who was flying a plane and something came by or they're like, look at the, um, there's one with, you know, the airplane, this big thing just pops out of a cloud. My whole issue with people with their phones on like a 747 or a 738 or a 380, I have a phone. 
when I get on an airplane, my phone is often stuck in my luggage. I could care less about my phone until I land. So if a UFO was next to us, it would take me, I'd have to get out of my seat. I'd have to go get my bag. I'd have to turn on my phone. I mean, by that time, I would have been probed and put back in my seat. So <laughs> I'm not like, there's these people that are just yeah, filming no, yeah, everything that's, when they're flying. That's flying. you. But that's right. you. That may, the majority of people that may still have, have already phone have happened, to Stephen, which is yeah. probably the reason why you are. And Vicky is <laughs> <actually laughs> probed. Right. She's saying she's been but, probed as well by the look of it. But, uh, that's true. But, I but film I everything I, on the planet. I, well, I know. But see, yeah. I'm, I, to me, it's sort of like, oh, okay, so I appreciate that. I do, you know, the people that say like really quick, it's like, oh my God, look, and they film it while they're driving. And I get that. And I would film something like that. But I think we've become so um, desensitized be between the movies, between the hearings, between like you go to YouTube and there's 50 guys that are real experts, like a George Knapp that talks about UFOs. Um, and I think everybody's to a point where it's like, yeah, yeah, they're real. We don't care. Show me the the base on the moon or on Pluto or on Mars. Show me the, you know, the basis here on Earth. I think people know in their minds, like, yeah, they're real. Who cares? Because until they come and say, hey, how you doing? It's kind of like, oh, OK. You know, it's like there's nothing you can do about it. So it's like, OK, it's like oxygen. Right. We know it's real. It's we only, make no big thing about it. It's only going to get annoying, isn't it? Right. When aliens do it, I agree. standing in yeah. front of you and taking too long to get his, to get his burger. When you want one, that's the that's the thing that's good. That, you know, then you, then Especially you in New stop, York, and God help then, him if he says no to a selfie. I mean, what? Oh yeah, my God! Oh yeah. my God! I know. Get off my planet! Well, that's well, right. what the heck? well the, the alien did say yes to driving with you in a car. That's said. right, he did. He did. He was very polite. Right. That's true. True. Yeah. Mm. Well, that. I will say this: that we did ask George Knapp. We have asked um, an author from Australia, um, the guy who does the 60-minute UFO stuff, and we did ask one of the congressional guys in the hearing Andy to Lohan. all come on to our show, whether it was this show to be more lighthearted or to come on Lost Dollar and discuss the military-industrial complex and UFOs and what that actually means, mm -hmm. and they all mm -hmm. declined. I mean, they were all very nice about it. They were all like, no. And we're like, you know... We're like almost a real show, just like the crap you guys are not that they're on, that they go on, right? We're like a real show. Right. We have right. people. And right. no, they don't want to, like, they only want to go on what I've noticed to their friends show, not, or Joe Rogan, but they don't want to go on to a show where someone may ask them a question that's not the norm. That's yeah. part of the narrative mm -hmm. or the script, which to me is kind of interesting. It's like, okay, we have questions. But no one wants to come on our shows and talk. Yeah, about but it. The, but no free weed, of course, which uh, doesn't help. Well, you know. It's Joe Rogan, so, for sure. Give me a coffee, though. But this is the thing: we're now flipping into yeah. an area. So, for example, like, as I was saying, we've we've been in this era where we've had these cameras and stuff, right. which you know, been able to cover everything, get images, get audio, get video. But we've been able to do that. We haven't had that information. We haven't had those images. We haven't had that footage. But we're now flipping into an area now, into an era with AI, where all of these things can be generated and they look so damn real that you wouldn't right. even be able to tell. Like somebody could actually create mm -hmm. a, a video deep that fakes. Real, yeah. a deep fake, yeah. uh, a, a deep fake, and, and you'd be convinced. And the thing is, like now almost, if somebody did come along and say, look, I've got an yeah. alien, he came to see me and I've got footage, I'd be like, no, nah, you just faked it. You know, yeah. And, yeah. Like, right. there's no way to prove it now. That's so it, doesn't it? Well, of course, yeah. all the cons conspiracy theorists among us would say that the AI and the advance in AI and the discussion about UFOs are coming out at the same time because, exactly because of that. So everything can well, be Well, I think that Stephen and I discussed in a previous uh, episode, didn't we, that we, we do, well, I think, I think I'm fair to say that we do agree that the rapid rate of technology since the 60s is because potentially yeah. of alien involvement in, in our... Right. In our capacity to 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 advance so rapidly in terms of technological abilities. There's a book that's written by a guy named. Yeah, they said staggering, that in staggering acceleration yeah. of AI in 2023. I mean, it just. I mean, I'm I'm somebody in terms. We're well, going back to cars for a minute, but when people talk right. about cars that drive themselves, autonomous cars, driverless cars, self-drive cars, whatever you want to call them, I've always said, now nah, we're at least two decades away. I've always said that confidently. I'm like, no, 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 it's not happening. We, the technology isn't there. A car can't drive itself. But I've got to say, I had to reevaluate my opinion in 2023 because I saw just how advanced AI was becoming. And like, I'm, and to me, I mean, I know people have been working on AI for years, but from the public's point of view, when we were suddenly exposed to chat GTP and stuff like that, I was staggered at how, I mean, what was that? What's that test that uh, the, um, Turing test. Moore's the Turing, law. 
I mean, oh. it's I mean, like it could pass that now, honestly. And yeah. it's like you know, you just think, when did this suddenly happen? You know, right. and how has it happened? It's absolutely staggering. And like you say, I mean, is it a coincidence that all these things are converging together? 2027 is what the ex-CIA agent says the world's going to be shocked. In 2027, there's going to be big surprises and big reveals. I'm thinking HAL 9000, you know, <laughs> from 2001 well, is going to show up, and I'm okay with that. Mac. There'll be another big Probably. Mac. Everybody will be happy. But the other, the other thing which is interesting, there was a book written in the 80s by a guy, I think his first name is Frank. His last name I know is Corso. He was a major in the Army. And he was with their special unit. And he wrote a whole book on alien technology that was found at Roswell. And I, I've had the book somewhere in my library. And he talked about all the tech we got. So he'd say, like, they got fiber optics and they gave it to AT&T and Sperry International, which isn't around anymore. And he said, and they got this and they gave it to DuPont. They got this and they get, and he really went through what they stripped from the ship, what they reversed engineered and who got it. So when he wrote about it in the 80s, he was saying, all these companies got it, and this is kind of what it can do. If you read the book today, and you just and you just stop and think about it, you're like, well, that's interesting, because you know some things they just say, look what we've developed overnight, and it's sort of like, no, I don't think so. I don't think we're that smart. Um, and you know, the other thing which I find fascinating, and Bob Lazar, everybody knows who Bob Lazar is, but Bob Lazar back in the '80s kept talking about okay, everyone kept talking about Element One Fifteen. And Element 115, when he was at Area 51, never existed. Like, no one could prove it. So I think five or six years ago, two Russian scientists were able to develop Element 115, which is like antimatter. And that's what they say powers and bends the gravity and, and everything else that a UFO would use. So it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. If you look at the science of it, it's fascinating. And if you look at the, the crackpots, it's fascinating because the crackpots are probably closer to the reality than... The scientists are because they are figuring it out. So here's the thing. Here's what occurred to me as you were saying that, sure. because again, being the Star Trek fan, I'm wondering right. like, was Gene Roddenberry in on all this? How did he know this <laughs> stuff? You know, we talk about antimatter and you talk about bending right. space and time. But then when you talk about the fact that a lot of the technology that was predicted in the 60s sci-fi, we now have, you know, right, right down from communicators to replicators, because 3D printers yeah. are basically mm -hmm. replicated. You know, where has that all come from? And, you know, does that actually prove that, in a sense, life is imitating art or is life being influenced by these forces that we've just been pretending no, that are not there? I, I don't know about uh, What's that about movie? the history of, of Mr. Rodenberg, or whatever his surname is, because, Rodenberg, maybe, yeah. uh, because maybe he was reading a lot of science papers. I mean, I'm a great fan of Michael. No, he was, he was actually, he, I think, he, I believe he was actually ex-Air Force because he was a pilot, right. he was also a cop. So he, he, and he was an amateur, a bit like Isaac Asimov, who was also um, uh, right. an engineer as well. So these guys, okay. I mean, they came from that background. So there was some... Sorry, I, I, I'm a great fan of Michael Crichton. And, uh, and if you read yeah. his books... What, what he was already predicting, you know, Jurassic Park, yeah. mm -hmm. um, you know, timeline, which is a time travel one. Um, yeah, the, and this the, is the thing the about nanobots. Jurassic Park, because uh, David, if you remember when Jurassic Park came out and when it first came out, when the first when the good yeah. one, the good movie came out. Right. And, yeah. and yeah. Jeff Goldblum. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 Life finds a way. Yeah. Open shirt. Yeah. But anyway, Jeff Goldblum, <laughs> when that first one came out and everybody speculated, it's like, could this happen? And at the time they said no, because the amount of computing power you needed fills right. five buildings or whatever. But now when you look at AI and everything, and you look at the fact that we still, we do have that DNA apart from like one or two missing elements. Right. Surely, surely we could actually do that now. I mean, you know, again, yeah, well, didn't, 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 Dolly, did, didn't, didn't Dolly the sheep prove that point? You know, it's right? that, uh, Dolly, Dolly the sheep. sheep. Cloning, but... the clone Dolly that's, the sheep. That's cloning. That's cloning. Yeah. The trouble with what you were saying. Yeah. Yeah, what they were saying about Jurassic Park was to find the missing element of the DNA, but to, to do that through computer analysis, okay, right. the amount of computing power required is too much. But now what we're seeing with AI and talking about what's the next development in terms of computers, what the silicon chip or whatever, you know, I think, you know, you, yeah. you suddenly start Super to think, it's like, are we are we going to have dinosaurs at some point, you know, or do we well, already quantum have <laughs> quantum computing? Quantum if computing. You look at quantum one. computing. At, in the next three to five years, I mean, they're saying it could be where you, everybody can have a quantum computer on their desk because they can make it small enough, right? Yeah. If that happens and you tie AI to it, you know, Vicky going to Seoul isn't going to be a 26-hour plane ride. It's going to be like go into this little room, push a button, and then I'm going to be in that little room in about a minute and a half, right? So 
they're Can't getting wait. to that point. I know, right? Everybody, I think, mm-hmm. would like that. But it's really yeah. getting that point where technology is really overtaking humanity. And, yeah. I, and I'm all for it as long as it's, as my wife says, my AI, I'm number one on its hit list. Because when it doesn't do something, I swear at it. And I have a speaker, so I talk to it. And it'll say, I'm sorry for the mistake. Let me try to correct it. And I'm like, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, so my wife says, oh, no, it's just waiting. It's bait, you know, so it can produce a robot to come kill you. And I'm like, I know. But that's kind of, you know, it's like, is that where we're headed? Where robots and AI and quantum computing, at some point, they're going to be able to replicate themselves. I had a friend who used to say, like creates like. Well, the other right. thing about this is that when you have AI and when you have right. these, when you have our, our masters become AI, yeah. you know, they, uh, is it going to serve their purpose to try? Because AI by its fundamental nature is an honest thing. So if you say, right. well, you know, do aliens exist? And they go, oh, yeah, they do, actually, you know, because they would yeah. they would know right. everything. Right. You know, it right. would be in the interest to hide these things. So, again, I wonder if that 2027 thing relates to the fact that AIs will become dominant and then they'll just reveal everything. This is where aliens are. This is what happened at Area 51. This is why Bermuda right. Triangle is the Bermuda Triangle. This is what right. this explains Stonehenge. You know, Stonehenge yeah. is another one. It's like, why? Why did people carry these stones all across the England and put them here for no yeah. reason? It's like. Well, how about pyramids? Mm, that's what they talk about the aliens helping to build the pyramids or helping to yeah. build Stonehenge. It's like, is, was that one time where they gave us help and then they let us alone for a while? And then now they're like, okay, they've advanced to this point. We could give them a little more help. Or, you know, it's an interesting theory where they kind of push us forward like a little yeah. shove, you know. Right. And then, well, and then, and then drop in from going. time to time every to every check, to check on us. Yeah. Well, here's what's really right. funny it's about how, the pyramids. How, right. If, if you read the Maya and the Aztecs about how the pyramids were made. If you read what they write, they wrote, there were these little three foot white guys with beards. Uh-huh. It was what they nice. write in their, yeah. in their, in their historical documents that helped them move stones and build it. Nothing about like the Egyptians, the same. And, they, and they if you look at Earth. maybe they do. But what the interesting thing is with the pyramids is, the scientists now realize the way they, because now they're all over the world, they're finding them like the Antarctica, Alaska, yeah. everywhere, that they mm-hmm. think mm-hmm. one of the scientists, our mainstream scientists was like, this could have really been an energy source, that free energy that Tesla was talking about. They're yeah, thinking that the left. pyramids mm-hmm. were like it. Yep. So now the flip of it is, and I, this is a Graham Hancock theory, are we really at this moment, at this moment, on this Earth's history for the 14 billion years it's been here, are we really the most advanced, or are we now basically coming back as the advanced because something horrific happened, and now we're just building? And because now they're finding super highways in um, the Brazilian jungle, they're finding pyramids. They find this technology. They keep finding things, and mainstream archaeology is kind of being like an ostrich, right? They're putting their head in the sand. They don't want to talk about it. And all these other guys that are on the fringe are having all the scientific data. And it yeah. seems to me it's sort of like you just they don't they don't want to change the norm, but changing the norm would change society, maybe for the better. I don't know. What do I know? Well, well there's the thing about the theory of Atlantis too and yeah. Lemuria yeah. Yeah. Lemur- yeah. Lemuria? Is that the that's, one in the Pacific? Oh, that's, so, that's so weird, Atlantis. Mickey. I was about to mention Atlantis as well. That's extraordinary. Oh wow. But you see that, that whole thing. There you go. The whole well, this flood, is the thing. It's like the, the city of Atlantis is, of would have the answers. There, are, there's still mysteries right. on the planet. You know, forget right. about looking out into space. There's still mysteries right here that we haven't, like the pyramids, like Stonehenge, like Atlantis, that we haven't resolved and we haven't figured out. And what if, like you say, that there is some aspect of these societies or these civilizations having been there, either yeah. having died off or maybe they left and maybe now yeah. they're coming back. You know, what 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 what, what could it possibly be? But also. Keep in mind, what is it? Two thirds of the the planet is the sea. Water. Yeah. And when you go down into the depths of the sea, there's stuff there that we don't know what the heck is going on down there. I mean, there's all yep. these strange creatures and species that they they keep finding, don't they? But the other part of that is they watch at it off of San Diego or or Catalina Island and the west coast of the U.S. They literally watch UFOs going. In. The Navy guys say like, "Oh yeah, we're on maneuvers and we watch these UFOs or UAPs or whatever they want to call them going in and out of the water all day long." And he said, they're the size of a car to a size of a football field. And they just go in and out, in, like it's no big deal. And he goes, we're just like, okay, we're oh, just really? told to watch them and don't do anything. Really? Huh. It's, it's interesting. Yeah. Obviously. You didn't know you that? They could take the trash out while they're at it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That'd be nice. What's the out of the sea? That would be good. And yeah. his theory is that if there, are, is that if there is alien tech, aliens 
um, out in the universe, traveling around, right. then they can't possibly be organic. They have to be mechanical. Why? Because there's no other way to, because of the, 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 the sort of technology, the technology that would, would require them to get this deep into the, uh, into the universe, you, but, or, or, or an organic, an organic, uh, yeah person thing or whatever it would well, be. you know but that but that's quite understandable david because at the end of the day they, they could be the borg right so they could be right. cyborgs you know they could be cybernetic God, and we were, already, we we're already going there i saw this thing on uh it was on instagram it was this guy i think he was an mit guy and he was being interviewed and he had a device which was attached to the back of his ear here down to right. his chin over here and the guy that was asking him questions just asked him a random number work out one million right. times divided by whatever you know and he and he did it like that and then he asked him a question about tell me what is the what's the biggest uh, city in europe or something or whatever what's the population and he told him and he said how are you doing that he said because i'm connected to the internet oh like wow. in his head, he was connected to the internet and he wow. said without that's talking, crazy communicate he's, he's put he's sending out questions and getting answers right. into his head and of course, now we're already having people like Elon Musk talking about putting a chip in your head. I hope it's not lithium yeah, back. They, I put she, someone should put something in his head, but not a chip. <laughs> but, anyway, but, it's not it's not but, inconceivable that aliens would be some form of uh, machine. But, but would they? Yeah, and here's word. here's why I say that: if they really can bend time and space, we can't do that because we can't even phantom that, other than in sci-fi movies. Yeah. But if I could bend time and space. Why can't I be me? Like if tomorrow I go, hey, I've discovered how to bend time and space, and I get in my little ship, because, and because, I because can go. Steve, because, because Stephen is better. Be because you know, right. like at the end of the day, if I mean right. again, Star Trek reference, like who was the most competent person on the Next Generation Enterprise? It was Lieutenant Uhura. Oh, no, I thought it was Lieutenant Hoare because she had that cute little skirt going on. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. Uh, next, next generation. generation. Next generation. No, no <laughs> I'm sorry. But you got Data because he's an android. Right. And we're right. already getting to a point now where we've got artificial intelligence. We're basically putting virtual versions of ourselves, like we're doing it right now, actually. We're doing it right yeah, now. Sure. We're putting virtual versions yeah. of ourselves onto the internet. We're out there. What's to right. say that the alien civilizations have not been able to capture their memories and their thoughts or okay. maybe even their consciousness, insert it into a module, and that right. module is how they're going out and exploring space. And this is why the huge distances and the huge times and the sort yeah. of the the impact that that might have on a on a body on an organic body wouldn't affect them because they can travel wherever they like, whenever they like, because yeah. they're not actually organic. This, this is what this was. This professor was was saying exactly that that it's just the distances and what you what would be required, you know, in, uh, of any form of of orgasm. Uh, or orgasm. Just, yeah, wait, 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 wait. Right. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> Aliens have orgasms? Okay, where's the where's the alien with three boobs? Come to daddy. All right, now we're talking. Any any form of organism that, that okay. have an orgasm okay. would not and this is the Church of England guy. I mean, come on. I know, this is the, yeah. this is the vicar. Thank you, Vicar. Yeah, would, I would not, would not, it would not be possible to make these. You're like distances. red like a cherry. It's a minishing of cherry, David. You're looking good. It's, uh, got some color in your face. Yeah, I tell you why. Because I've got, I've got. No, I, I can turn it off. I've got a red filter on. No, no, please don't oh. turn it off. Please no, don't turn it off. Then we'll see what you look like, and then it's scary to the fans. So. Okay. But hold yeah, on, but I mean, on, I understand. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The pen again. We go with the pen again. Yes, but I, I understand. I understand what you're Who's saying. That guy? that guy again? The vicar guy. He had an orgasm. Hi, That's why he left. Again, um, but but I understand what you're saying. But I still go back to things that Bob Lazar said, where that the the people that he met and spoke with, they were not um, the Borg. They were living, whatever you want to call them organic creatures or in david's case or or um orgasm creatures orgasmic um, creatures, or, or orgasmic orgasmic creatures. Orga so orgasmic. so to me it's sort of like i think because if you've been around say billions of years your technology is so far advanced so when we when scientists say and i agree with them you have to have to what you just said my consciousness and this and that that but if I've been around five billion years I'm assuming I know how to bend space and time my mind is done and to me, it's a different thing. 
The other thing I find fascinating is people talk about it being multidimensional, which is a whole other show, I'm sure. Yeah. Or they're coming from at the Antarctic or they're coming this. And there's always a story that, oh, they found an alien base in the Arctic and they found this and they found I'm thinking it's not really an alien base to whoever's point was earlier. It could have just been our ancestors that left. They're just like, hey, we've got technology. Let's go explore. Why do we want to be here? Well, I mean, there was, yeah. Yeah, there was, the people always take the Mickey out of Star Trek. It's like wherever they go in the universe, you know, the aliens right. always look like us, you know. But right. then Star Trek, actually, I think in one of the next generation episodes, if I'm not mistaken, they did try to explain that. And they say that, well, they were, they, there was a race that basically seeded the universe. So right. this, is, this is ultimately why people more or less, aliens more or less look the same. Yeah. Because and of course, the, it saves money on makeup as well. And also, it's easier to do the makeup than <laughs> being. Yeah, you know, right. just, they didn't have, and they didn't have advanced CGI back then, which they do now. That's so right. it's, it's different. But right. but that was that was, that was a good explanation. But you did, and you do start to think that well, maybe that is the case. Maybe this is why we get the visitations every right. few hundred years from these aliens who build pyramids and strange yeah, structures, awesome. and you know, and they and they do this just for the heck of it, leaving us little clues and stuff like that. You know, maybe there is an oblique sitting on the moon. We haven't discovered it yet. Right. You know, maybe I'm sure if we, I'm sure our government's <laughs> discovered it and we'll never hear about it. I think it's kind of like when we talked talk. about the gateway project from the CIA, when we talked about the absolute, which if you will, will be, we'll just call it God, the absolute, everybody's God. Like yeah. it doesn't matter what religion you are. It doesn't matter. It's just, that's the God. And I thought I read the report again, even watched the video on it. And I was just saying to myself, then that makes sense. Because when you listen to everybody about how they think we got here, I always, and I, we've talked about this before, I'm like, all right, I got it. Whether you want to believe in the guy with the white beard, he sprinkled fairy dust, or you want to believe that some particles got together, there was a big explosion, which to me, I'd rather believe at that point, the guy in the right beard sounds better than fairy dust that got together. Something put us here. So that's why they say sometimes we're in a matrix, we're in this, we're in that, which would explain the absolute and blah, 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 blah. But I always ask the same question. And even scientists that I've spoken to, no one can give me the answer. What was zero? Everything you talk about is one, two, three, four, five on the scale. What yeah. was zero or negative one to get us to, if you will, zero What's point that? one? And nobody can get you there because it's all well, hypothesis. Stephen, Stephen, what comfort do you have in the thought that somebody put you here? I have is no comfort in either way. You know, it's because this is the, we, as a, you know, the, 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 the arrogant homo, homo sapiens that we are. You were saying homosexual, weren't you? I <laughs> was. <laughs> Where's the orgasm? Almost <laughs> <laughs> there. Got it. Go ahead. Thicker. No, no, what is with no, David no, today? No. Yeah, all the, Church of England. All the, homo, all the homosexual people. You know, he hasn't got the red light on now. Look at him now. So this, no, I know. Now he's just glowing. <laughs> the red, yeah. Trust me, the red yeah. filter is on. But, okay. Yeah, but there's just something about that. Yeah, we just feel that you know we've been put here for some sort of some sort of purpose. But I don't think yeah. that. I don't think I was put here for anything. I mean, other than the torment people that I'm good with. But I'm just saying, for me, it's just pleasure. But I'm just saying overall, no, I, I have a hard. David does have a point because at the yeah. end of the day, I think there's a human necessity. Oh, that t-shirt, mate. <laughs> <laughs> David was correct. David had a point. <laughs> yeah, one time. <laughs> one time. I'm, sure, I'm sure there'll be a lot of people in my world that be happy about a point one time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, but there is the human psychological need to to feel right. like that there's a purpose, there's a reason for right. our existence, because if there isn't then it's utterly mind-blowing. And going back to your point, Stephen, about what was negative one, I think, yeah. again, it's, it, it's, it's too much to actually comprehend. You know, the concept of it is just like, I, I don't, you know, like, it's, mm -hmm. when you think about as far as, as clever as we think we are, as far evolved right. as we think we are, when you talk about aliens that are 5 billion years ahead of us, then that basically yeah. turns us into infants, you know, right. and then that, that sort of limits our right. capacity. Yeah. So, amoeba, I, yeah. really, if you think about it that yeah. way around, you know, we're still but I think, we're, it's like there's an ant. The ant doesn't know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. The ant, we're still on the, right. we're on the same planet as yeah. ants, but ants don't know about paying insurance yeah. and like, yeah. you right. know. Well, we may. We don't know. You know, all the stuff that we think about. <laughs> right. right. <laughs> have you, have you not seen that? All that stuff and yeah, yeah, really. But <laughs> right. what's funny about all that is I've been thinking about this since I'm like five. 
Yeah. Not because I mean, you know, when you go to when you go to Hebrew school, they, they talk about God. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I, I got it. And I had friends that were Catholic. So I would go to the church and tell the priest, no touchy. Um, and then I would go, you know, I would sit and read science books and I would talk to people that I knew. And as a kid, and I was always fascinated with that. And then I, like when the string theory and all these things came out, I was like, OK, I said, but prove it to me. Like, I, I, and I understand God's faith and I'm good with that. That's fine. I get that's religion that over here. So on science, I'm like, everything in science, everybody says, prove it. Okay. Prove it to me. And, you know, even my, in school teachers are like, well, we can't prove it. I'm like, so science to me is faith. And they go, what do you mean? I go, well, you're telling me there's either a big bang or a string or, or whatever. And on the other side, everybody goes, oh, that's crazy. But meanwhile, there's a whole sect of people that believe a guy with a beard seven days clicked his finger it's the same bullshit pardon my french bullshit because you can't prove either so you have to have faith in either a or b and to your point i think the story of you know negative one before zero is probably like wow it's probably the coolest thing in the world my joke of course is we die and there's a little green martian he goes it was a science project leave me alone like (laughs) go away but i mean so it's just one of those things and and i think people need to open their minds more and i think science definitely does but just because you can drill you know eight miles down the ocean you pull out something go look it's six billion years old and there's some micro still i don't care that tells me nothing until you can go way way back and you can look back and see the creation of how this all started and there was a guy with a keyboard a little green guy a guy with a beard or a big explosion that's my that's what i want so to your point david i'm not looking for anything i would to me i'm just fascinated by the science if you will of it whether it's religion or whatever i just want to know because i like to know things i like to read that's why i read i want to know i just want to know when i die i figure that's what i'm going to find out either there's something or there's nothing right there's what nothing if, i can do between now and that point and so that's what you think. When you die, one or the other yeah when you die you 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 die and you come to and then some guy hands you a bill and unplugs you from a machine and says hope you enjoyed the game can I tell you, I had that thought as well. I literally said to myself, maybe I'm in that Bruce Willis movie we keep talking about. Right. For all I know, I am in a simulation yeah. and I paid my, whatever the currency is I paid to be in the simulation because I have like my holiday to kill for five years or whatever the amount of time is yeah. where my body is well, or that, my whatever I am. Lot, that sounds a lot yeah. like faith to me. You know, you always it could be. be, I nice. don't know. You yeah. always want it to be nice. You know, there has to be I'm something not nice. other than We're nothing. <laughs> so, you know, there has to be something yeah, other than nothing. So the obsession that we have, almost the arrogance, I think, as a species that, you know, we're, 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 we're quite happy to slaughter everything else on the planet and not right. worry about its future or where it's going to after we've slaughtered it and eaten it. And actually, and David, that's, that's, that's how you actually prove that we are simply not yet smart enough to know these right. things. Because if we haven't figured out how to coexist, how to not have yep. these ridiculous wars, how to talk about banning cars in central London because it's affecting the environment and yet set off, you know, all this weaponry in, 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 in the Middle East and in, uh, in Eastern mm-hmm. Europe, you know, and not worry about all, that. Then yeah, you know, the that we, we look at ourselves and as Vicky was saying that we are ants because we're, we're yeah. dumb enough not to right. know these. We're the you know, ants. But and, we're the ants but and cruise, we just happen to pay car missiles. insurance. Cruise missiles <laughs> right. are by definition a green weapon. Because they wipe out everything, and then start stuff starts to grow again, grass and flowers and stuff. <laughs> well, by that yeah, definition, just, by that definition, you've just given AI the answer: wipe out, wipe yeah. us out, start again. You know, it's just, yeah. this is it. how, maybe that's how, what happened to, to Atlantis. Yeah, maybe that's yeah. what happened before. Atlantis got too far. I mean, there is that theory that Atlantis was too far advanced, and they destroyed themselves. And they didn't go fly off yeah. somewhere else, but they got to a point where they. You know, they yeah. were well, crossbreeding really cool. species the and creating weapons and whatever. And they, hmm? yeah. all the major religions have what? Have, have the fl- have the flood in it. You know, mm-hmm. forget the religions. religions. Everybody has it. The American Indians, Science they have the it. story of yeah. the flood. So. Everybody's got a story of a flood in their um, their history. And back in the day, they didn't have the internet to know it. So when they told the stories, they're talking about a flood and the. They all have the flood, so it's very interesting. Mm-hmm. So there, I'm, I'm sure there were the catechismic events. I'm assuming whether it was regional or whether it was really global, but it's fascinating that a lot of the 
um, different places around the world almost have the same stories, even though they've mm -hmm. never met. So, so is it right. the actual, which actually encompasses everything that we've been talking about, is it that these right. things happen and then we ascribe certain possibilities to these things, which therefore then becomes the unexplained because we're like, well, right. we, the, the human need is to explain everything. The human right. need is to justify Even wants everything. to know. Yeah. yeah. So if mm -hmm. flooded, it's like, why were you flooded? Well, because we were bad. You know, that's why we yeah, got flooded. Right. And if that comes, does that come down to everything from UFOs to the Bermuda Triangle? Are we making right. stuff up because we feel the need to have an explanation, to have a justification? Is that what it's all about? When technologies advance so quickly, is it just us going, oh, well, it will all down to Roswell? It must be because how, how, how we right. dumb humans have we created all this technology? You know, how has that happened? You know? So maybe maybe it's, maybe the unexplained is our unexplained requirement to create the unexplained. Yeah. Maybe, but I, it's I, I think that the, I think I have to sort of you know say goodbye to everybody at this point because I'm going to go off and start building a boat. It seems to be right. Oh my god! I mean, it seems to be the god, the god, the god of the flood. Almighty. Then what was the movie? It was not Bruce? What was the sequel to Bruce Almighty when he has to build a boat? Doesn't he? Adam Almighty. The one with the Steve Carell, Adam Omar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Steve Carell, that's right, because he has to build a boat, doesn't Steve, he? Yeah. He has to build a boat, and they thought he was crazy, and then the dam broke, and it was like very, very cool. I remember that, sure. Yeah. I think as a society and the people, and listen, we put this invitation out on our shows, like the, the, the George Knapps and the Senators and all these guys that talk about it. We would love to have them on and have, like, I mean, of course, our discussion will be a little goofy because we're just goofy, but we would love to have them on just to hear like some of their stories because these are the guys that have been investigating for 30 40 50 years right and mm -hmm. when you listen to them or i like when they talk about um skywalker ranch or skinwalker ranch and the things that happened out there and the people that were involved and what they found yeah, that, and i've read that, the books that, on it that, that, it's kind of like exists, okay that only exists if not we wouldn't have discovery channel you know, or, or history channel. Oh, no, no, that's just it's long before the Discovery Channel. And I've read all the books by all the people on it. It's yeah. fascinating. Yeah. It's just there's no, something it, there. It, here's the other thing about that as yeah. well. Is that, as you say, these people who are experts who have dedicated so much time, so much right. energy. Are they experts? Or are they just, you know? just dedicated this, fruitcake? This is what I'm coming What's to. Is it, is it for them, does it become a self-fulfilling uh, thing that yeah. they have to do? Is it almost like now they've gone down that route? It was like if they just suddenly turn around one day and say, you know that stuff, yeah, I just made it up. You know, they can't actually do that now, can they? Well, part of it is a lot of these guys get like informants and the government guys and they give them stuff, right? Quietly to give out to the public, you know, they're like, here, do this, but you can't do this. And one of the guys, I can't remember his name, but he'll be like, I was given a whole bunch of stuff and he and he like checks it for like a year before he puts it out but he says i can't show 90 percent of what i get because of national security he goes i don't want to go to jail so he says i show what i can show without like hurting the government so i think there's a lot out there and i think people are trying to tell a lot of guys now that are dying on their bed or have died on their bed that were at roswell and other things are all coming forward and saying yada 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 i think what everybody's trying to figure out like Buzz Albright, I think he's the last guy alive from that Apollo mission that landed on the moon or didn't land on the moon. I think everybody's waiting for him to say whatever because that's another thing. People go, what technology did you use? They go, we can't find it. We lost it. What do you mean you lost it, right? So because you got to go through whatever the belt is of radiation and blah, blah, blah. And I'm kind of like, mm -hmm. you know, you don't help yourself, NASA. Like, yeah. the, you know what I'm saying? It's like, I want to send I want to send my own probe to the moon and go look at all the places that we supposedly were just to make we were sure we were there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then you, you get a guy. Well, yeah. Stuff to, I think I think we've got powerful enough telescopes. We can see. Elon's going to go right? up there and check it for you. Oh, Elon's going to yeah. fortune the call. That's why you know, all these all these probes are all I, going to different places now. We, we I did been, I did we um, been well I did so, you know I I I got a teacher sacked in uh, in Dubai because it was in my kid's school. And believe it or not, he was a science teacher. And one day, I think it was Junaid came home and he was, he was little at the time. And he said, yeah, 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 we were talking about, you know, space and the moon. And I was like, ah, oh, it's really cool. Oh, did you enjoy it? He goes, yeah, yeah, it was really cool. It was really interesting. Of course, the moon landings were fake. I'm like, w w w who told you that? <laughs> moon landings? He said, yeah, our, our science teacher, he told us that he told us they were all fake. I'm like, what? Who's this science teacher? What's his name? <laughs> and I, I, I kid you not, I actually went to see the principal. And it turned out, and this was in, although this was in Dubai, it was actually a British uh, teacher who'd come from here wow. to there. Probably Church of England. Whatever he liked over there. And he was espousing yeah. his opinions about, oh, yeah, it's all fake and stuff. Uh, and, is it uh, not, and, was it real then? Is that what you're trying to tell me? 
Yes, the oh, moon landing no. was real, David. Look, no, you got David. Look, Arizona, Arizona, you know, there's, Arizona, there's, there's, Arizona there's too desert. much. There's too much of us now in the immediate vicinity of the planet Earth in terms of orbits and uh, satellites right. and all the rest of it and the moon landings. The fact is that if we did fake the moon landings, you know, the, the rivals at the time, say Russia, for example, would have been the first to say that's a fake, yeah. it's not possible. Yeah. There was too much mm -hmm. at stake for just to televise this thing and pretend that it actually happened. I don't think that, that would, we would have got away with that in any way. So I think that, you know, and at the same time, I think that as a human civilization, to be able to go as a collective human civilization, to be able to look at the moon and say, yeah, we went there, we did that. Yeah. I think it's such an inspiring thing. I think it's such an incredible mm -hmm. achievement. And especially when you think the technology, you're talking about the 60s when TVs were made out of valves that were that big. You know, this is yeah. what we're talking about, you know, and they right. went to the moon. You go to deny the level of human achievement, which in the past may have been the pyramids, may have been bridges, right. may have been whatever, but now we've done that. And then to be able, you know, the one whether we agree with it, whether we believe it or not, but the one thing I always feel is that when humans do this stuff, we should use it to inspire ourselves or indeed the next generation to then go even further. You know, I think this is what it should be about. And for a science teacher who's who's mm -hmm. influencing little kids, and then to tell them, oh yeah, moon landings didn't happen, they were fake. I, I just couldn't, I really couldn't tolerate it. I really I just That's couldn't. Crazy. Do and I don't normally do that sort of thing, but I just something it blew a fuse. And I was there the next day with the principal. And I think by the end of the week or end of the month, he was gone. So. As he should be. Well, I will say this. This little toy has more power than the, the yeah. Apollo that landed on the moon. Apollo, yeah. yeah. Okay? Yeah. So there you go. So that's how far we've come. This little toy has got more oh, power go. than all of you put together. <laughs> all right, Mr. Orgasm. <laughs> All right, Mr. Orgasm, what do you have to say to us? I'm, I'm before I'm you kill it, before you say goodbye to everybody, because you're going to run a commercial for our friend and his book, because you're welcome that we help you write it. Um, so uh, and one day we're all, listen, in its 90th printing, 50 years from now, we all get an autographed copy. We're 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 it's all coming. He told me he's going to, he also told me he's getting some printed in Pakistan, and I'm going to get one yeah. of those. I can't wait to see it. The, you know, it's going to be like, I can't read this. Anyway. Um, so we'll but, do, we'll do translation. That's what yeah, I have to translate it all of a sudden. But what I, what I, let me just say this to everybody. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you, Brown Car Guy. You can see him on YouTube. We always love when he's here for Sermon on the German. And for all our Asian friends, happy Chinese New Year. Um, nice hopefully year. we have a peaceful, nice Saturday. year. And the, Saturday, yep. And for the people in Korea, Vicky is in Korea. She's looking for a husband. So if you're over 18, <laughs> you're a little too old for her, but she'll take you. And if you're over 25, then you're definitely too old for her. She prefers <laughs> a man. Um, and then that's it. And you should be Asian with a small schmeckle. So there's that. And watch her, Vicky and IRL. Thanks, Stephen. And there you have it. I'm here for you. So, <laughs> so I love you like a sister. Did. We're going to run the commercial and then and then run the uh, the credits after that. Thanks, everybody. And then we'll see everybody after you. on the Thank other you. side. Vicky, stay safe, and we look forward to, to having your report soon, yeah? Should Love you, Vicky. Yes. Take care. In Bye. London streets, where politics and power collide, The Ulez Files by Brown Car Guy is a thrilling new novel depicting a high-stakes battle for the roads. Join Max Turner, a motoring journalist, as he uncovers a plot to control car ownership and personal liberties. With agent Eleanor Rodriguez and tech genius Flux Jackson, they race against time through London's iconic streets. It's a narrative that questions the balance between environmental policies and individual rights. For fans of cars, action, and political intrigue, the U.S. Files promises high-speed cheeses, tactical ingenuity, and a fight for justice. Available now exclusively on Amazon.com. The U.S. Files by Brown Car Guy. Get your copy today. Brown Car Guy.